I've been asked to make this video for years, quite honestly, years. And well, hey, OP finally delivered. If you've been around a bit, you'll know I rarely make promises on this channel and only when I feel pretty certain I can keep them. But right now, I'm gonna make three. This project that I'm gonna show you in this video, it's fun. You are going to get bonkers results. And lastly, this can be very easy or very hard. Start easy, and that's where we're going to begin. As we get going, here are a few basic lens physics principles to keep in mind. The first is that lenses have a focal length. Of course, I think we all have a pretty good idea of that now. The second is that lenses have an image circle too, and this is often not stated. As a basic principle, if the simple, we're talking simple single element lenses here, if its focal length exceeds your image media's diagonal length, it will probably work wide open. There is no guarantee on that, however. And the last principle is that your selected lens to cover your image medium needs to have a focal length long enough to reach infinity on your camera, and it needs an image circle that will cover your image media, which means you need to know your camera's register distance and image media diagonal to get the most out of this project. For image circle, here's a tip. You can check the image circle of a lens in a few different ways. Use a lamp and your hand to see approximately how big the image circle is. Use a sheet of black construction paper and a window, which will give you an even better and clearer definition of the image circle and will give you the ability to check it at infinity focus. The latter also will give you a way to approximately gauge how sharp the lens is. And now lastly, if you want to go crazy, use a piece of ground glass, either a large format camera itself or a ground glass from a large format camera, or even as I did when I started out with this, a piece of clear rigid plastic that you can take some fine sandpaper to and that will make your own ground glass for cheap. And then what you can do with that is hold the ground glass between the lens and your eyes, and you can get a really good idea of how the lens behaves, the image circle and the sharpness. I'm gonna give you one guess which of those I do. Yes, all three. And it depends on the information I need at the time and what tools I have sitting next to me. So let's assume you have a simple single element lens with a 50 millimeter focal length and a Bronica S2A with a 107 or 101, whatever it is, millimeter register distance. If you mount that 50 millimeter lens on the Bronica, you will be 50 millimeters or so beyond the infinity focus point, which means you'll be magnifying to one to one right out of the gate. You cannot use this project to make a super cheap ultra wide lens like a four millimeter full frame lens. If you take that same 50 millimeter lens and make a 32 millimeter long adapter to mount it on Sony E, well, then you'll be able to focus it at infinity. Modern photo gear availability from, as one specific source, eBay makes building basic lenses very simple. Here's a basic kit and parts that I could find on Amazon have affiliate links in the video's description. But if you don't wanna spend any money other than getting a simple glass element, you can also mock up a simple tube with, say, a couple of paper towel rolls and also make a very basic sliding focusing mechanism. Anyway, if you wanna make this out of some slightly less cardboardy materials, you'll wanna start with a Your Mirrorless Mount to M42 flat adapter, also sometimes called slim adapters. Don't worry about making the M42 register distance with this project because you're going to need that extra space when it comes to building your lens housing. You want to give yourself maximum room to make a housing for this lens. You will also benefit from, though it is a little bit optional, having an M42 aperture iris. Now these are irises that have M42 threads on each side, one male, one female. And this is going to give you the ability to insert an aperture somewhere into your lens system for aperture control. And that is very important with simple ele single element lenses. Next, you'll want to get one or more M42 focusing helicals. 
And there are an array of these in lengths with, I think, starting as short as 11 millimeters to 17 millimeters. And on the long end, I think they go from 65 millimeters to 120 millimeters. And that's the, the shortest length out to the expanded length when you focus them the whole way. I think that's the range. And then there's a myriad of different options in between. The next thing is that when you start on this project, go for long lenses first. If you have a 50 millimeter lens on an 18 millimeter register Sony E-mount camera, you will not have much space for a focusing helical and aperture. You may have to sacrifice one of those two items. Now, if you have a 100 millimeter lens, then you have a whole lot more room to play with. With a long lens mounted on an aperture only, you can also use a macro bellows for focusing. So there are many ways to make this project work. Next up, Get an array of step up and step down rings. Make sure you have some with M42 threads. These rings will allow you to make a small housing for your lens. You can take a couple of rings, put a lens in between them, a step up and a step down ring that is, and then just screw them together. And now you can put your lens into your system somewhere. Now this assumes, by the way, that you're starting off with a very simple single glass element construction for this project. Now those step up and step down rings can help you create some small adjustments in the housing that you make. And that means you're likely to be able to get closer to infinity focus with your lens. Now, as you get better, you can add multiple elements to the system and experiment with how they work. You'll need more step rings and more elements for that. It's fun to do that by the way, but get the hang of building lenses with a single element system first. The last item here, here is your basic parts list. A your mount to M42 slim adapter, one or more M42 to M42 macro focusing helicals, some M42 macro tubes if you have a long lens and need to make up some space, and a host of step rings. If you're using a 100 millimeter F5 positive single element lens, then you have a lens that will be 20 millimeters across. You're going to need small step rings for that. So buy a handful of simple elements first and then a bunch of step rings and you can have some fun putting this thing together rather like an erector set with a lost instruction book. Next up, there are a few different lens types to know about. Now the main two categories are positive and negative. Positive lenses converge light and that forms an image. Negative lenses diverge light and that changes the overall objective's focus point. Ooh. Objective, by the way, is the proper term for what we usually call a lens. A lens is a single element. A group of optically connected lenses is a group. The elements and groups in front of the aperture, which is closer to your subject, are called the front cell. And the elements and groups behind the aperture, which is closer to your camera, is called the rear cell. All of that together in a functioning assembly is the objective. So pick whatever lenses you like, but a lens with a negative focal length will only create a diffuse circle if you leave it alone in a system. You won't be able to focus an image with it. So whatever you do, you need at least one positive lens. And starting out, I recommend going for just one positive lens in the system you build. Next. Each lens can have one of three possible surfaces. Plano, which is flat. Convex, which bows away from the lens's center line. And concave, which bows toward the lens's center line. The specific arc radii of the surfaces combined with the refractive indexes of the lenses determine each of the lens's focal points. You don't need to know the math for this project, but it's fun to understand what properties make a lens element a specific focal length. Now, used in combination, these three surfaces create six potential lens types. Plano Plano, which we usually just call a window. Plano Convex, which is often positive and has a flat surface on one side and a convex surface on the other. Plano Concave, which is often, if not always, negative and has a flat surface on one side and a concave surface on the other. Biconvex, which I think should always be positive and has both surfaces bowing away from the lens center. 
by concave, which I think will also always be negative, and looks rather like an hourglass. And then convex concave, typically called meniscus, and those can be either positive or negative. This is where you should start with this project. Find a 100 to 150 millimeter plano convex, biconvex, or even meniscus lens, and you want to look for something that's going to be around but not much more than 50 millimeters in diameter. Make a simple step ring housing for it. Play with focusing helicals and an aperture and see where it takes you. Buy some M42 macro tubes of different lengths so you can see how different aperture placements within the lens tube affects how the lens performs in the images you get from it. Pick up a box of old ruined UV filters at the thrift store, remove the glass, and hey bingo, you've got short spacers to fine tune infinity focus. Don't try to make something super fast or super bonkers. Make something usable that can teach you about how to build lenses at home so that then you can go on to the next steps. Okay, look, uh, that's all well and good, but I just want to make something usable, not learn all this optical engineering stuff. Okay, well, we can do that. First rule for what I'm about to show you, never use a repairable or good camera. Use a camera with extensive rust, bad electronics, or like a missing film door that can't be replaced. Buy a parts rangefinder on eBay for this. Seriously, don't destroy a good camera for this project. Recovering a dead camera's lens can either go well or terribly. There's really no in-between on this. I've had it go both ways, and with some rangefinder makers, I've had the lenses completely fall apart because the housing for the lens was integral to the camera body. So this process is at your own risk, and you should expect to fail and ruin the lens you are trying to harvest as often or more than you succeed. A fun place to start with this is a dead lomography fisheye or La Sardina. These lenses have complete housings and can be removed easily, or at worst, with a small handsaw and some anger. Now before jumping into this project, here are some basic tools you will want to have already ready to go when you start. Some JIS jeweler screwdrivers in multiple sizes. Do not use Phillips because most cameras were made in Japan, and they use the specs outlined in the Japan Industrial Standards. You're also going to want one basic and small hacksaw, just in case. One or more spanner wrenches, the more important of these being a straight spanner, the less important being one that has angled tips. Don't skimp on this tool and buy a cheap one. Make sure to get a nice one. You'll also want some nesting rubber cups, and these are the kind that are used to remove lens information rings or the backs of watches. You want a lens element suction cup. This makes removing elements from inside the lens housing, if you need to, much easier. Get some lens cleaning fluid and tissues, isopropyl alcohol and cotton swabs for any grease, and also to loosen any glue. You also want something you can use to hold the screws so you don't lose them, like a weekly pillbox will be perfect. Now optionally, you want something to video this process so you can put the lens back together if you take the disassembly too far. And lastly, you want to have confidence in and experience with disassembling camera lenses. So if this is new to you and you want to try this project, get a Lomography fisheye. This project is super simple with the Lomography fisheyes, and it's also generally about the cheapest broken parts camera you can find on eBay that is simple to disassemble. The other thing that you can do is buy a broken parts lens, the cheapest one you can find, off of eBay. If you go this route and just buy a cheap broken parts lens to disassemble, then disassemble it entirely. You can see how it's made, and you can try putting parts of it back together if you would like. And then once you're done, you recycle everything in that except for the lens elements, and then you can use those lens elements to make your own lens. At this point, before you start taking apart a camera, see if there are any disassembly videos or tutorials online for your specific camera. The biggest risk with a rangefinder lens adaptation is that the aperture will be rendered useless. If the aperture cannot be controlled on the lens itself, you will not be able to control aperture on your adapted lens. Don't waste your time on lenses like that. Trust me. Mounting a rangefinder lens is a bit more challenging than a simple glass element when it comes to putting it onto your focusing helical. 
After you remove a lens assembly from a rangefinder camera, you will also cut off any linkages that are poking out the back of that assembly. You may also need to disassemble the shutter leaves and remove them from the camera. It, that is only required, by the way, if the shutter keeps springing itself closed. If the shutter can stay open, you don't need to remove any part of the leaf shutter assembly. One thing about this, if you don't want to disassemble the leaf shutter, because that is a really good way to ruin this project, what you can do is take a tiny drop of plyo bond, like a drop on the end of a toothpick, and put it on one or two of the leaves when they are closed. Then what you want to do is push them open with the clean end of that toothpick and leave them propped for an hour or two overnight, frankly, would be even better. And that should hold those leaves open. You want to make sure to use very little glue and not to get any on the aperture mechanism, which is generally right next to the leaf mechanism. Now, if that plyo bond doesn't hold, the next step up from that would be a clear Gorilla Glue, and that will hold. Once you have the lens assembly removed from the camera, mount it to a step ring with tape. What you're then going to do is fit up your step ring to a focusing helical and a your mount to a focusing helical size adapter. Insert and remove step rings or filter rings that have had their glass removed until you can use that lens with infinity focus on your camera. If you focus a hair past infinity and can't get perfectly to infinity, that's okay too. And you want to test this, by the way, with your focusing helical all the way collapsed. If you're happy with the focusing setup with this mocked up lens, then what you're going to go ahead and do is take either some epoxy or some clear Gorilla Glue, and you're going to mount that step ring permanently on the back of your lens assembly. And as a tip, do your darndest to center the rear element within the step ring that you're gluing to your lens. This point right here, by the way, is the only place that I ever use glue in this process on a regular basis because generally I want to be able to take apart lenses and reuse components as I experiment with different pieces of glass. Rarely, a lens will have a thread on the back of it, and if so, finding a step-down rings to that thread size is a jackpot. All of this said now, here are the best things I can say to you about this project. It's fun, so embrace it. Go bonkers with the simple lenses because they are just simple and also so enjoyable. Try different lens types and focal lengths, different diameters and so forth. Put different elements into compound systems. A very simple compound system to start with is two identical lenses pointed at each other. That's a rapid rectilinear. The most complex lens I've made at home is an Aplanet out of some simple lenses. Does that Aplanet suck? Oh yes, it does, but it's fun to use. Use this project as a learning tool and also as a creativity building tool. If you have never used a lens that is, from a technical perspective, abjectly awful, you'll likely find that your creative voice benefits from this project. Drop me a line in the comments with questions. Show me the work you do with the lenses you build. I honestly want to see what you can make from this project.